Greetings and welcome to introduction to the introduction to EDU C539 scientifically based reading instruction. Um, this is for K6 through the St. Mary's program. Um, my name is Sarah Papadon and I'm going to be your instructor for this course and I just wanted to give you an overview of the course today on this uh, video session and then um, give you a, some additional information as far as who I am and um, yeah that's probably about it so let's go into uh, just first of all who I am and um, what I've kind of done and what I currently do um, I received my bachelor's of science degree in K-6 elementary education and with a 5-8 uh, social studies license and a concentration in EBD then I, after I got that license, I substitute taught for a while and decided that I really liked special education. I applied for a special education job and um, I got it. I was working at Eastview High School in Apple Valley, Minnesota as a 9-12 through 12 LD resource teacher. And at that point I went back and got my Master's of Science in Special Ed. Um, I currently have a K-12 license in SLD and um, I'm waiting uh, for my uh, final ASD license to go through. So that is coming hopefully soon. Uh, after that, I decided that I didn't really know a lot about how to teach reading, and there was an opportunity through my district to go through reading recovery training. And so I spent a year training um, under the theory of Mari Clay and in reading recovery and became an informed advocate and worked with a first grader and then also um, they allowed me to take that learning and see how I could apply it to a, a high school age student so it was um, great theoretical learning for me and growing for me uh, and I decided after that that I needed to continue uh, to know more about reading so I went back and got my reading license and now um, I'm currently uh, a doctoral student at St. Mary's or St. Cloud State University. Uh, currently, what I do, like I said, I, prior to this year, I was working as a high school LD resource teacher and uh, reading teacher. With that, I worked with all um, all kids, general ed, special ed, LD, EBD, ASD, um, OHD. DCD. I, all the, I mean, as an LG research teacher at a high school level, I found myself working with pretty much anybody and everybody. So, um, after nine years of working at as that uh, teacher at Eastview, I was offered a position at the district level as a uh, teacher on special assignment, and um, currently I'm a special education literacy specialist, and I work as a tier two RTI intervention trainer and coach in our district. Um, we believe in an integrated um, RTI model where uh, Tier 2 means um, like another four, 30 to 45 minutes of intensive instruction as well as core instruction. And um, we, I work with those teachers that are providing that in um, intervention. That includes special education teachers, title teachers, uh, EL teachers, um, and some general ed teachers as well. So that... Uh, position is what I'm planning on doing as well next year. So this is my fourth, the end of my fourth year working for St. Mary's University. I've worked in their special education program since 2010 and have always been part of the reading, providing that um, reading portion for St. Mary's. I was drawn to St. Mary's because before it was required uh, for state licensure, St. Mary's really believed in offering more uh, reading to their special ed teachers and um, how to teach reading because they know how it's important it is and that really was important and valuable to me so and then currently I'm on a few advisory boards for the University of Minnesota and for the Department of Education but um, those are just minor things but do provide a good um, experience for me to learn kind of what other places are doing and what the state is expecting um, um, so that's a little bit about me and uh, the reason why I'm drawn to literacy like I said a little bit earlier was because when I first started teaching I realized I had no idea how to teach reading and 80% of my learners and 
most learners in special ed when we um, want to talk numbers have some kind of reading or writing disability or trickier area in that um, in reading and writing. So when I realized I really didn't know what I was doing and how to teach reading, I realized that I had to grow myself and um, learn how to teach reading to our most struggling kids. So as you grow with your learners, you're going to recognize that there are many areas that you probably will end up needing to know more about. We won't know it all as we graduate through the um, go through our schooling, but definitely this course EDUC 5 through 9 will provide you with the beginnings of um, some information that you're going to need to know and have a basis of understanding so while you're working with your students you can uh, tap into that knowledge and seek out further knowledge. One of the first assignments, I guess, learning activities I should call it, that I have you uh, participating in is about mindset. And uh, Dr. Carol Dweck wrote a book called Mindset, uh, The New Psychology of Success. And I have a video here that I'd like you to watch and just reflect on about um, where you currently are with your own mindset and how your mindset can impact your students' mindset. Just keeping that in mind. And as you take this course and your future courses and uh I hope you continue to reflect on, on her ideas around mindset. So EDUC 539 is going to provide you an overview of teaching standards for the state of Minnesota. So again, it is really just a basis of what you're going to need to know for your um, entire career. And you're going to obviously need to go more, so, but if you keep in mind that this is just the beginnings and that this uh, understanding will continue to grow as you grow. So, I'm going to just run through the syllabus, and then part of this course is a clinical, the clinical part of the course is a practicum. So, I'm going to go through those guidelines with you as well, uh, so you have a little bit of understanding of what the expectations are. But I'd like to start with the syllabus. So, pull it up here. On here you're going to find uh, my name, my email address through St. Mary's and my phone number. Uh, you're welcome to email me at any time that you have questions or um, need something. I also use Google Hangout quite a bit if you want to video chat or uh, talk uh, with a more face-to-face -face personal contact. I'm fine with that. So, uh, And welcome to use the phone as well. Just um, I'm not always available via phone. So. I try to respond to emails within 24 hours. If you don't hear from me within 48 hours, please email me again. I get um, a lot of email through St. Mary's, and I do try to keep up with it. But for, if I don't respond to you in 24 hours, that's usually that's unusual, I should say, for me. So um, let me know or just email me again and say, did you miss this? Because I might have. Uh, the course is going to address the K-6 reading standards for the elementary teachers licensed in Minnesota, and because you're getting a K-12 license, the state of Minnesota requires that you have um, exposure to these standards and met these standards as well. So, The syllabus is drawn up very similar to the other uh, SMU courses, so you'll see right off the bat we have our student learning objectives and then some information on what you need for Engage or uh, Blackboard, depending on which course you're in. And that's there. There are four textbooks that I'm asking you to have throughout the course, and two of them are located via e electronic ebook. Uh, the National Institute of Child Health and Human Development put out the National Reading Panel Report um, in 2000, and that report is located online so you just click on that link and you'll be directed to the the report that you'll need to read and then this book by Dr. Jane Flynn I teach reading why do I have to know linguistics because you teach reading is uh, an ebook that is out for this course that you'll see um, in the course as well and I'm just gonna so that will be those two. This item will be on Engage or Blackboard, and this one again is a link. The two uh, texts that you'll need to purchase for this course are the Qualitative Reading Inventory Five. Um, that's 
the author is Leslie and Caldwell. And the most recent version should be the fifth edition. So you, if you're going to be purchasing this um, through Barnes & Noble, it will be the fifth edition that's there and available for you. That, uh, that text we will be digging into more deeply in week six and seven, but the uh, sooner that you get it, the more um, time you'll have to really get in and kind of figure out how to use that assessment tool. It's a great tool because it uh, it not only uh, talks about informal reading inventories and teaches you about those, but then it's an entire informal reading inventory that you can have at your access at any time for um, progress monitoring, IEP, PLAF writing, present level writing. Um, even uh, three-year assessments as review of you can use these this kind of tool to give you more information on your student students so the next text then is the continuum of literacy learning grades pre-k through eight this text is one that you're going to need right off the bat we need it first uh, you'll be doing a discussion question right away during the first week of class so uh, this text is kind of like my go-to for pretty much everything. I'm always looking at it, finding out where my kids are at currently, what's the next step, where do I need to go, what holes do they have, how do I help fill them. It's just an all-around guide in literacy and how a student, a, a child develops um, with literacy. So it, we're going to dig into that right away first week. So having that one, it is also through Barnes & Noble at the school store. Um, so those are the textbooks that you're going to need right away. On top of textbooks, there's a lot of online resources that we'll be using that are posted on Engage or Blackboard. And then as far as technical support, it's for Engage, you'll have this, you're going to go here or call this number. And the Blackboard course on your syllabus, you'll have it, um, the technical support through St. Mary's. And then at the end of the course, we do ask uh, that you provide feedback. So you'll get a, a email that's asking you for a survey on on the course. And I, I not only do I appreciate it, St. Mary's is appreciates it, but I really appreciate it and grow from it myself. So um, I will remind you of all of that closer to the end of the course, though, too. The syllabus is set up in four different modules and eight sessions. So you can see that the first mon module that we have is the Foundations of Reading Processes, Development and Instruction. And that's going to cover Emergent Literacy Development, uh, which is your first session. You're going to always have standards here, the learning experiences that you're going to go through throughout the course, and then the uh, you'll have instructions kind of what, what will, you'll need to do for the, that week. This is also all on Engage in Blackboard. At the end of each session, you'll see an assessment, and that's where you're going to see what the um, expectations are for the assessment for that week. So each week's set up like that, and so under Module 1, you will be working through Sessions 1, 2, 3, 4, and 4. And again, they're all set up in that same way where your assessment's at the end. And then... Um, the second module that we're going to go into starts week four, excuse me, or session four. And that's where we start talking about instructional methods and materials for effective literacy development for all students. And that module, again, all the sessions set up the same standards, learning experiences, and assessment. That module goes to week five, and then on week six we hit module three. And that's going to be assessment of students and programming. Pro program planning. This is where we're really going to get into the formal and informal assessment tools that you'll be using and your practicum student. And I'll go into your practicum student in, in a little bit. With this, uh, I would just advise you to not wait until week six to look some of this over or get started with your practice or to start thinking about your practicum student just because these two weeks, six and seven, tend to be kind of heavier weeks. And um, you might want to get a head start on that if you can, or at least looking through it. Week 7 is the end of the Module 3, and then Week 8 is our last module, and that's about creating effective and motivating classrooms and school programs. So that, that 
final session set up again in the syllabus the same way as the other weeks. You have one this final presentation that is due uh, at the end. This is probably this assessment too is one of the bigger assessments that you want to think about as well. At the end of the syllabus, we just have a breakdown of the a synopsis of the assignments, and I am going to let you know that the points on Blackboard and Engage are accurate. The points on the syllabus might not be, so um, they they weren't allowed. We didn't weren't able to break them up. So you'll just notice that the entire course is worth a hundred points, and um, so each week has a different amount of points and depending on what the expectations and the mastery of uh, standards are for that week. So so you can see under here you can see all the assessments that are going to be looked at each week and the breakdown of the approximate points that you'll be getting for those. This discussion activity is non-graded learning activity so it will say that on there to, to note. So. So that's the end of the syllabus and then the breakdown of how we grade for St. Mary's. And then um, there'll be rubrics and, and like a writing rubric that's the expectation as well on, Black, on Blackboard and Engage for you to look at. The next thing that I want you to take note of is that because of the expectations from the state of Minnesota that this course does require um, a practicum and that this practicum is a 10 hour practicum it also was noted in the syllabus but I wrote up a document that's on Engage and Blackboard for you to look at and um, just right off the bat I want you to keep in mind because it becomes t it is 10 hours and we don't really address the assessments until week 6 or 7 if you want to get started with the assessments sooner than week six, um, you are welcome to start your practicum at any time. Um, but it will start with giving them six assessments and then the QRI, which is another assessment. So a total of seven assessments, but um, one is the QRI, which you don't really dig into until week seven. So all students will need to participate in the practicum, and it's a minimum of 10 hours. The first few hours will be giving the informal reading inventory and assessments outlined in week six and seven. Your student should be needs to be a kindergarten through sixth grade student. I would recommend um, you probably get a little more from a student that's in first grade, but if you have access to a kindergartner and that works for you, that's fine too. It just might be a little your analysis might be a little different because of the student's age. So, um, It can be anybody. It doesn't have to be a student with a disability. So if you wanted to, if you have a neighbor, a friend's child, your own child, um, it, it can really can be any student that you want to work with uh, to run through this practicum. Um, like I said, the first few hours, and I say one to two hours, but it might be two to three, just depending on uh, your, because you you may not have seen assessments like the ones we'll be giving, and it might take you a little longer. So I'd say maybe the first two to three hours are giving assessments, and then after your initial assessment, you're going to finish the 10 hours and work with them on a specific focus on their needs based on what you found out in their assessment results. So the expectations are that you administer the assessments, you scan all the documents that you used, and you're going to upload that to Engage or Blackboard, analyze the student results, and then part of this assignment is that you write a parent report summary, and you are expected to pass this information on to the parent um, or teacher, just with the caveat that you're in the learning process and this is you know your first time with this kind of analysis so but parents do like to see this information you're gonna meet with your student for the rest of your hours research supports so what's really important here is that research um, Richard Allington will tell what often says that 30 to 45 minutes are best for accelerating student progress Beyond that, we begin that student progress begins to either go down or level out. So 
with all practicality for this assignment, I wouldn't go longer than an hour with your student per session. Under, and I understand though that because of how it works, you may you may have to, but really thinking about making it best for the student and for your learning experience, that 30 to 45 minute sessions, depending on the age, is the, is the um, appropriate amount of time for that, uh, that time you're working with your child or your student. So for each lesson or time you meet with them or session, you're going to create just a brief lesson plan. And it doesn't have to be anything formal, just a few sentences about what you plan on doing because based on what either the day before or your assessment. And then um, you're going to just write a short reflection. And that's also outlined in Engage and Blackboard. There's going to be no videotaping required. However, if you have a tricky time with a kid and want me to observe or coach around the learner, please don't hesitate to ask. Um, we could try to set up either a hangout and I could observe that way or you can call me and just talk to me about it or videotape and somehow figure out how to upload it. I'm not quite sure how to do all of that, so, but I know there's ways. The assessments you're going to be giving your student to start out are the QRI and that will include the word list and the text leveling. You'll get more information on that later on. Word survey spelling assessment, baseline writing prompt, word, there, word writing cafe, or it's like a word spree. The solemn, which is a student observation of oral language um, matrix, concepts of print and hearing and recording sounds. And these two would be the only two that you wouldn't give depending on the age of your student. These two assessments are very much for an emergent reader. So if you're working with a student that's, um, that's older, that has um, concepts of print under control, then you probably won't have to give them that assessment. You're just going to have to explain that, and that's fine. I'm, um, if you're working with pretty much kindergarten through first, second grade, maybe, that you're probably going to give these two assessments, depending on where you know their, what you already know about the student. If you don't know anything about the student, I just recommend giving them all. It's going to be good practice either way, so... So that's the practicum, and as we go through, there'll be more mention of it. Um, and of course, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. I'm going to uh, sign off at this time, but I wanted to remind that based on the course, we're going to try to meet um, week two, week four, and week six. Week two will be for sure. Week four and six will be dependent on your guys' needs. So. Um, and we'll either do that through Google Hangout or um, Adobe Connect, so depending on your course. Um, so, again, if you have any questions, feel free to email me, and I look forward to working with you throughout this term. Thanks.